Did you know there's a total of 98 screws holding the JBL Boombox 3 together? Well now you do. And welcome back to the channel everyone. Today I'm excited to share with you guys a teardown of the newly released JBL Boombox 3. Coming out of the price tag of $499, the JBL Boombox 3 has been redesigned inside and out. On the outside, the speaker now exhibits the iconic JBL logo that is on all the latest JBL releases. Toward the top, it has a newly redesigned aluminum handlebar with silicone grip lines on the bottom as well as redesigned twin caps on each side of the speaker. On the inside, one main upgrade of the Boombox 3 is its three-way speaker system design. It now has a huge racetrack woofer, two mid-range drivers, and two tweeters versus the Boombox 2 which only has two woofer and two tweeters. Other than that, some other minor upgrade includes the IP67 rating and Bluetooth version 5.3 that the Boombox 3 has now, whereas the Boombox 2 was IPX7 and has Bluetooth 5.1. So without the way, let's get started. Included in the box, we have here the beast itself, the JBL Boombox 3. Measuring at 19 by 10 by 7.9 inches and weighing around 14.7 pounds, the Boombox 3 provides you with excellent distortion free sound that is perfect as an indoor and outdoor speaker. Next in the box, we have an AC power cable, one quick startup guide to show you the proper operation of the speaker, one safety sheet to go over all the safety info, and one warranty card in case the speaker decides to give you any trouble. Now let's get into the teardown. Like any other JBL speaker that I've teared down in the past, first thing I did was attempt to pry open the fabric grill. After prying open the back half, I realized that the grill cannot be removed until we get the handlebar off. Therefore, let's turn our attention toward the front of the speaker. To start off, we will remove the passive radiator cap on each side of the speaker. These rubber caps are twisted and locked tightly onto tabs on the speaker, so you will have to carefully pry them off. It will take some patience and a bit of force to get these off, so take your time. For me, I was a little impatient, so I used force with a snap of a finger, and they just came right off. Both plastic caps are rubberized and help protect the speaker from damages, especially the two passive radiators. Next, we will remove six screws around the passive radiators and two screws that are securing the handlebars. Be aware the two handlebar screws are quite tight, so be careful not to strip the head of the screws. We will go ahead and repeat the same process on the other side of the speaker. With the four handlebar screws removed, we can now remove the handlebar. The handlebar is a solid piece of aluminum that is durable and comfortable to use. It has the Boombox 3 logo indented on the top and has an additional row of orange rubber grip lines running beneath the bar to help provide you with a secure grip on the speaker. Next we can remove the remaining plastic cover for the passive radiator. Now we can turn the speaker around and continue removing the speaker grill cover. Since I already have half of the grill pried open, what I'm left with now is just to remove these four screws. After removing them, I can easily pry it off the remaining side of the grill. This is a big sturdy fabric grill that protects the speaker from damages, especially the six driver that the speaker contains. Aside from having the large JBL logo in the front, it also has rubber grip lines on the bottom to help set and support the speaker. Next, we will remove the right passive radiator assembly by removing six screws. After removing the six screws, we will peel off this thicker foam to finally release the right passive radiator assembly. Once it's open, we can gently disconnect the mid-range and tweeter cables. We will do the same exact procedure for the left side of the speaker. Now 
uh, with both these sides removed, we can now go ahead and remove the tweeters, which are held on by five screws each. These tweeter measure 0.75 inch and run up to 10 watts each on AC power and 8 watts each on battery power. They bring out the highs by providing the speaker with noticeable, crisp sounds. With the tweeters removed, we can access and remove the mid-range driver that sits right beneath the tweeters. These are held on by 4 screws each. These mid-range drivers measure 2.75 inch with 40 watts each on AC power and 30 watts each on battery power. They do exactly what they are called. They provide the speaker with the mid-range frequency which range between 300Hz to 5000Hz. With the tweeters and mid-range driver removed, we can take a closer look at the side enclosure of the speaker. As you can see, the cavity of the mid-range driver is completely sealed off from the rest of the enclosure, allowing for mid-range sound enhancement and elimination of any interference that would be caused by the pressure produced by the woofer. This isolation also helps the woofer in redirecting the air pressure only toward the passive radiators. Now off to the center portion of the speaker. We will remove the woofer by taking off 8 screws. Before taking out the woofer, we will make sure to disconnect the speaker cable from the motherboard. And here we have the huge 3.18 inch racetrack woofer. This single driver punches out 80 watts of farm MS power when powered by AC and 60 watts when running on battery power. It provides the speaker with massive JBL original pro sounds and a much deeper bass with low distortion. Just to give you an idea of how big this racetrack driver is, here's a quick comparison of it to the JBL GO3. As you can see, it's almost 3 times as wide as the GO3. With all the 5 drivers working together, you get an incredible combination of sound from all 3 areas, the low, the mid, and the highs. To continue the teardown, we can go ahead and remove the battery indicator by removing these 4 screws. This will give us access to the battery indicator circuit board. The circuit board contains 6 LED lights and is nothing more than just a charging and battery life indicator. Now to get access to the battery pack, we will need to remove these 8 screws. And here we have the battery pack, which consists of 8 18650 cells. This battery pack is 7.26 volt with a capacity of 9600 mAh that takes up to 6.4 hours to fully charge and has a total play time of up to 24 hours on a single charge. Now I normally don't use the speaker for more than a few hours at a given time, with the most being 5-6 to six hours. But with this long play time, it's nice to know that the speaker doesn't have to be charged as often or worrying about if the speaker has enough juice or not. Now to access the AC circuit board, we will need to remove 3 screws from each side of the cover. With the screw removed, the whole cover along with the board will come off together. You will need to remove 4 screws to take off the AC board. This board supplies the speaker with 180 watts of power which enables the speaker to play louder compared to if it was running off of battery power at 136 watts. Next we can remove the charging port cover by removing 5 screws. Once removed we can pull out the whole charging assembly. The USB circuit board is held on by 3 screws while the AC plug is held on by 2 screws.
To remove the motherboard, we will first remove any cables that are still connected to the motherboard. After that, we will locate and remove the five screws that are holding the motherboard in place. And here we have the motherboard. The motherboard contains Bluetooth 5.3, JBL Party Boost, and allow you to use the free JBL control app to remotely control the volume, equalizer, and many other settings. The board also allows you to use any device via the auxiliary port as well as use the speaker to charge up any mobile devices with the USB output. Last but not least, let's not forget to remove the main button control by prying up the silicone cover. Once it has been gently pried off, you can remove two screws to remove the control board. This board contains nothing more than the sixth main control button for the speaker, so unless you really need to, I will leave this part alone as it may further compromise the IP rating of the speaker. And here is a quick glance at the main body of the JBL Boombox 3. And here we have it everyone, the complete teardown of the JBL Boombox 3. If you find this video helpful, please don't forget to support the channel by liking the video and consider subscribing to the channel for future video. Also, if you have any suggestions for future teardowns, I would love to hear them in the comment below. Till then, I will see you in the next video.